In the early 1920s, while the Russian Civil War was still raging, a small group of surviving aviation engineers and enthusiasts banded together in order to rebuild the shattered Russian aviation industry. Given the general chaos around them, producing aircraft on a large scale was out of the question. However, this did not prevent them from experimenting with various ideas and technologies on a smaller scale. One particular area of interest was the development of the first modern all-metal aircraft, a task undertaken by a young engineer named Andrei Nikolaevich Tupolev. Although Tupolev would later become one of the greatest and most renowned Soviet aircraft engineers, his early career was far from easy. He faced numerous challenges, including the ongoing war, a lack of trained personnel, limited production facilities, and the constant scrutiny of the new Communist Party. Despite these obstacles, in the early 1920s, he managed to produce two of his experimental aircraft, which became the first Soviet all-metal airplanes. His achievements demonstrated the superiority of the concept over earlier wooden designs, setting the stage for the future of the Soviet aviation industry. Andrei Nikolaevich Tupolev began his career as an aircraft engineer in 1909 when he was admitted to the Moscow Higher Technical School. There, he met Professor Nikola Yegorovich Zukovsky, who greatly influenced his interest in aviation. In the following years, Chupolev dedicated time to developing and testing various glider designs. When the First World War broke out, Chupolev secured a job at the Russian Tux factory in Moscow which produced a variety of goods, including aircraft. In 1917, the October Revolution plunged the disintegrating Russian Empire into chaos. Most aircraft manufacturing centers were either abandoned or destroyed, and all work on the design and construction of new aircraft essentially stopped. The Dux factory was an exception, and continued to operate at limited capacity, eventually being renamed the State Aircraft Factory. As one of the few aviation engineers remaining, most skilled personnel had either been killed or had fled the country. Tupolev continued working there. His perseverance during this tumultuous period would eventually pay off in 1921, when he was appointed as a deputy of the Aviation and Hydrodynamics Department, responsible for developing new aircraft designs as well as torpedo boats. That same year, he and his team began working on a new test aircraft to be built using metal alloys. The prototype was named ANT-1, representing the initials of Andrei Nikolaevich Tupolev. During this period, Soviet aviation officials and the German Junkers company engaged in negotiations over several years regarding the production of a duralumin alloy suitable for aviation construction. The German company sought to circumvent the arms and aviation development sanctions imposed by the Allies after World War I, while the Soviets wanted to acquire the technology independently to avoid reliance on the Germans. In 1922, the Soviet Union successfully produced its own version of duralumin, which they called Kolchuga Aluminium, named after the production center in Kolchugino near Moscow. Due to the slow development of the new alloy, Tupolev was forced to postpone work on his new aircraft until 1922. Though a staunch believer in the new metal technologies and foreseeing the benefits of lighter and stronger construction they would ultimately bring, his first aircraft will be of mixed metal and wood construction. His decision was influenced by several factors. The low quantities of available Kolchuga aluminium, the desire to err on the side of caution since using metal in aircraft construction was still a novel and unproven concept, and the need to test the quality of the alloy before committing to a fully metal aircraft design. The benefit of using wood was that it was an abundant and inexpensive material. There were still plenty of skilled woodworkers in the newly established Soviet Union. However, using wood also had numerous drawbacks the most significant being its short surface life in harsh climates. The construction of ANT-1 took over a year to complete, hardly surprising considering the general chaos of the time. 
The fuselage was built using four spruce long rounds, with the lower two connected to the wing spars and secured by four bolts. The section of the fuselage from the engine to the pilot's cockpit was covered in a metal alloy, which was also used to reinforce certain internal wooden components of the aircraft. The pilot's cockpit itself was equipped with a small windscreen and only the most basic of instruments. The aircraft's cantilever wings were constructed as single pieces. Large wooden spars were installed at the tips of the wings while some parts, like the wing ribs, were made using metal. The majority of the wing, however, was covered in fabric. The tail unit was similarly wooden, with its surfaces reinforced by metal fabric covering. The fixed landing gear consisted of two large wheels connected to a metal frame, which was then attached to the fuselage. Small rubber bungees acted as primitive shock absorbers. Newly established Soviet Air Force had access to three different light aircraft engines that could power the ANT-1, a 14-horsepower and an 18-horsepower Harley-Davidson, as well as a 20-horsepower Blackburn Tomtit. Unfortunately, none of these engines could be acquired by Tupolev. It wasn't until early 1923 that Tupolev managed to secure a 35-horsepower Anzani engine, which was by that point already over 10 years old and in poor mechanical condition. With no other option available, Tupolev decided to salvage the engine and make the best of it. The aircraft was finally completed in October 1923, and its first test flight took place on October 21st of the same year. Despite using an older engine, the first flight of their prototype proved successful. Following this achievement, the aircraft was primarily used for testing and evaluation purposes over the next two years. In 1925, the aging engine finally failed, rendering the aircraft unflyable. Tupolev attempted to find a factory that could potentially refurbish it, but the task proved too great. The aircraft was stored for some time, but its final fate remains unclear. Some sources suggest that the ANT-1 may have been scrapped during the 1930s when Tupolev and many of his colleagues were arrested during the Great Purge, and their design documents and prototypes were confiscated. Others believe it could have been lost during the Axis invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941. The success of the ANT-1 test aircraft motivated Tupolev to advocate for the development of fully metal-constructed planes. However, this was a big step up that would come with its own challenges, including greater reliance on specialized, highly trained metal workers. Being cautious, Tupolev did not want to risk any pilot's life until he was confident that the new all-metal aircraft would perform as intended. As a result, he devoted considerable time for refining various components of the future aircraft, primarily using speedboats and gliders. Once Tupolev was certain that all critical components had been adequately tested, work on the new all-metal aircraft, designated ANT-2, commenced in 1923. The design was primarily influenced by the requirement of the Soviet Directorate of the Air Fleet of the Workers and Peasants. The plane was supposed to be capable of transporting two passengers, armed with two machine guns, and most importantly, inexpensive to build. This marked the first official request for a new military aircraft by the Red Army. To construct the aircraft, Tupolev and his team established a small workshop in Kolchugino. Initially, there were issues because the workers at this factory only knew how to produce the Kolchuga aluminium, but not how to shape it into various forms needed for aircraft construction. As such, considerable time had to be spent on training the workforce. During this time, Tupolev had the opportunity to inspect a small Junkers workshop in the Soviet Union where German Junkers K-16 transport planes were produced. The Junkers K-16 featured a high wing and an open cockpit design, characteristics which Tupolev would go on to incorporate into his own ANT-2 project. For the fuselage, Tupolev opted for a triangular shape with the sides sloping inward from top to bottom. 
This design provided excellent structural integrity, reducing the need for additional fuselage struts. The fuselage had a small passenger compartment that could accommodate two passengers seated opposite each other. Although the aircraft was intended for three occupants, this was generally avoided due to weight limitations. Passengers entered the aircraft through a door on the left side of the fuselage. The wing was located just behind the pilot's cockpit. Constructed with two spars connected by 13 ribs on each side, it was covered with duralumin. Tupolev designed the wing with a curved concave underside. The entire wing assembly was then attached to the top of the fuselage using four bolts. To accommodate the pilot's cockpit, part of the central section of the wing was cut away. Additionally, two handles were added to the ends of the wings on both sides, allowing the ground crew to maneuver the aircraft on the ground. The rear tail assembly consisted of a metal frame covered with colchuga aluminium. The landing gear featured two fixed wheels mounted on vertical struts, equipped with shock absorbers to ensure smoother landings. At least one aircraft was instead fitted with skis. It was powered by a Bristol Lucifer three-cylinder engine producing 100 horsepower, enabling a maximum speed of 170 km per hour. The engine drove a wooden two-blade propeller with a diameter of 2.2 meters. Fuel was stored in two tanks located in the wings. The prototype was completed in 1924 and underwent its first flight test in late May of that year. To simulate the weight of two passengers, two sandbags were used, as Tupolev did not want to risk any lives at the prototype stage. Further flight tests were conducted on the 28th of May by a Soviet military delegation. Starting in June, the ANT-2 was tested with two and occasionally three passengers inside its fuselage. Overall, the performance was deemed sufficient, though a significant modification was required for the rear tail assembly. The rudder and fin size had to be increased, subsequently improving the aircraft's performance. To conduct further tests, four more aircraft were built. By 1930, at least one of these aircraft was equipped with a more powerful 200 horsepower Wright Whirlwind engine. A total of five ANT-2 unarmed aircraft were produced. While these were used for various tests, their specific operational roles are not well documented. The anticipated military variant, which was to feature a new cockpit positioned behind the wings and be armed with one or two machine guns, was never built. The first aircraft has been preserved and can be seen at the Aviation Museum and Monino near Moscow. The fate of the remaining aircraft is unclear, but they were likely scrapped at some point. This concludes our examination of Tupolev's first two test aircraft. What are your thoughts on these early attempts by the Soviets to develop the first all-metal aircraft? Let us know in the comments. And if you like what we do and want to see more, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Also, don't forget to take a look at our extensive collection of articles on our website, plain-encyclopedia.com. Thank you.